Good morning everybody. Uh, this is Danny from Deep South Homestead. We've got a lot of requests about pruning squash, uh, the summer squash, and I thought that uh, I would take this opportunity, it's a nice cool morning to come out here and to actually do this because we have some that are really needing to be pruned. And what I want to do is, first of all, we want to talk about some of the reasons why we prune. One of the first reasons we prune is so that it can get open air can flow through it because in our area here we deal with a lot of humidity problems and these humidity problems if there's not good airflow what you end up with is powdery mildew begins to form on these squash and secondly is if the squash are not open where they can be seen good then the bees have trouble pollinating and you end up with a squash at the end of it looks like it's got a blossom end right it just starts shriveling up that's because it didn't get pollinated because it's just too thick in here and I guess if you want to say where we live at there's another reason one is, is it when it's extremely windy the wind will catch these and just start flipping them if there's too many leaves on them everywhere so one of the first things we want to look for in the squash when we go to prune leaves is leaves that have an issue on them already. Now I don't cut my leaves down close to the stem of the stalk. I cut them back about four inches from it. And a lot of people go, oh, I wouldn't do that because that leaves access to a bug to get in there. But it might, but guys, it is what it is. Um, if you're gonna have bugs, you're gonna have bugs. But why not promote your squash? Because the squash, even though it's a summer squash, is actually a vine. And the more of the leaves you take off, that are bad the more of a tendency it has to want to run you want to keep your squash picked daily because the more you pick the more it will bear so we want to look in here first let's just take a look right here first of all I see a leaf right here see this leaf this leaf's got an issue it's not a good healthy leaf so that's the first leaf we want to try to take out and I want to move around here I want to find the base of it and it goes all the way back to right here. Now I don't want to cut it down here next to the stem. I come back about four or five inches from it and I just take my knife and I cut it off and I slide that. I get that leaf out of there and move it to the side. I look right here. Here's another one down here. They're laying on the ground right here. Now this is on another plant right here. And I'll come back and cut it like four or five inches right there and I'll lay it out to the side. Now, another reason I cut mine four to five inches long is because if you leave long pieces out there, it helps to stabilize the plant. If you cut them off close to the plant, then you end up with no stability on the plant and it just falls over. So that's one thing we don't wanna do. Another thing we wanna look for is leaves that cross one another from plant to plant that prevents ventilation from coming in here. Now, I'm trying to find a, an example here that'll be easy for you to see. Here's one right here. These these are all lapped over each other in here. And see down in here, these these leaves serve absolutely no purpose. They're hiding everything under the plant in here. So what I need to do is find out that this one here, this one here comes all the way back over to this plant, way over here. And I need to take this out and get a little more light in here. Now here's another one right here. This leaf serves no purpose. Back here, it's already been broken by the wind at one point. So we're gonna get rid of it. And we got this little old bitty leaf right here. We're gonna get rid of it. And here's another one crossed over way down in here. I'm gonna get rid of it. We got one here just laying in the dirt right here. And it comes all the way up to over to this plant way over here, so I'm gonna cut it off. And I'm gonna get it out. And let's see here, we got one laying right here that's laying in the dirt right here. Well, you see, see how this one's bracing the plant laying right here? I'm gonna cut it way back here because that way it's still got some stability to the plant. And we're gonna get this leaf here. Look how bad looking that leaf is. See that leaf? It, is, it has served no purpose at all up under there. Now, let's look on in here. Here's one here that's not in good shape. Let me get, a find, get over in here and find out where it goes to. It goes all the way around to the other side of the plant. I'm going to cut it off. We're going to get it out of there. 
and you're not hurting the plant. That's one thing you have to understand, you're not hurting the plant. Let me look here. Here's a leaf here. Boy, this one really don't look good. Look at that one. See that? That doesn't look good at all. So we're going to see if we can figure out where that's at. There it is right there. We're going to get it out. Here's one. Let's see here if we can find some, if there's any more right here. Here's a leaf here that the wind has broken, so there's no need. See, it's already broke off from the wind, so we're going to get it out of there. And here is one that comes way over here. This leaf was just looking for daylight, basically. It's laying on the ground up under here. Look how long, look how long that stem is. So here's another one here that's crossing over. And I know you're thinking, man, you're taking a lot of leaves out, but let me show you something. It's not gonna matter. Look here now, see how much more open this is? These flowers can now come in, the bees can find everything, the air can circulate around through here. And we actually have squash in there that we didn't know was in there before because the leaves had them covered up. And I'm gonna move down to another plant here. Okay, we've moved down one plant and I look right here and I see, see that end there? I don't want that. I don't like the look of that in my thing, and it's on the ground. So I'm gonna go in here and find where it goes, which right back here, I'm gonna cut that off. We're gonna get that one out of the way. And we've got some right here. Now this is a prime example of, of leaves getting all crossed up. You look right here. See how all these leaves are all crossed here? This plant comes over here, this plant comes over here. There's no way air can get up in through here. So I'm gonna take the very bottom one first, and we're gonna figure out where is it at. And it goes all the way back up into here. See that bottom one? It was looking bad anyway, so we need to get that out of there. And then we have another one coming from this plant over here, which is this one here. It's up under there. We're going to get rid of it. It's crisscrossing over. We've got another one. Let's see, where are we at? Right here. This one's coming out of there. See how these leaves, they all look bad on the ends. Now, we have an open plant here. I see one more leaf here. Let me get it out. Now, this one right here, the old bad leaf. Now we have a plant that's open. There is another leaf here, let me find it. Right there, that's the one I'm looking for. Got an insect issue in the top of that leaf right there. That's why we want to get that out of there. See how that's starting in there? There's not actually anything on it, but there has been. Now look at this plant, once we get few of these little old bad leaves out there. See how much more open this is? The bees can get in here now. The, the air can come through it. The sun can get in here. You've got a much healthier plant when you do this. Now I'm gonna show you, here's another leaf right here. That... See how when you look like that? I, I like, that leaf is serving no purpose. It's on its way out. Now a lot of people's probably gonna ask, how often do I need to do this? Well. Every time you come to the squash patch, look at your plants, check and see what they look like. Like I pruned this one a week ago and I'm looking and today it really needs it bad. So I'm going to have to spend probably the next 30 minutes or longer just going through here, making sure I open these plants back up because a week ago I had these plants opened up really clean, but in a week's time, look what they've done. Look how they've grown. And look at, these are things that we're gonna be looking for. See this here? See this here, how the top of this leaf is here? I don't want that. See this? I don't want that in my squash here because that could be the beginning of a problem. So that's an older leaf it's telling me. So I'm gonna come down in here and I'm gonna whack it out. Look at what I just did. See how I just opened that up? The bees can find everything. Here's another one right here. Now this one turns, goes way down in here. 
I'm gonna take that out. See how big these leaves are, no problems they got. A lot of people go, man, your squash plants look so beautiful. Well, they look beautiful because I take the bad leaves out, you know? Uh, here's another one down here. I'm gonna just get rid of this. See that? That don't need to be in there. Now we've got, see how much more you can see in that squash now? But just from up here, you're able to see it. Now I'm gonna show you how you can open something up. When you look in here, there's a big old leaf down in here. Serves no purpose up under the bottom in there. It's just feeding the leaf. Guys, we're growing squash. We're not growing leaves. Now we have to have the leaves for photosynthesis, but we've gotta be really careful about, let's just get this out of there and look at that. Now that opens it up where the bees can find everything, the air can pass around through there. See how much better that looks. And it makes it easier for us to find the squash and to pick the squash also. So I hope this, uh, this portion uh, of a video about pruning squash has been helpful because we've been asked by so many people how to prune squash. Now I want to mention something else here. The squash is planted next to the corn. Squash and corn are companion plants. I did that on purpose because the corn is tossing, the squash is blooming at exactly the same time. Honeybees love corn tossels. And when the honeybees come to my corn tossels, they also go, oh, here's squash flowers. They're beautiful. The squash gets pollinated by the honeybees coming to the corn. The corn is on the south side. The squash is on the east side. When the sun comes up in the morning, it hits the squash. It dries the leaves off really quick and stops the powdery mildew issues and stuff like that. By the time it gets to be two or three o'clock in the evening and the sun starts going toward the west, the, sun, the, the corn is tall now, so it's beginning to shade the squash and the squash is not being hit by the brutal hot sun of the evening that we have. And therefore the squash are being protected by the corn. So there's several reasons why my garden's laid out the way it is. My gardens are laid out north and south so that the east and west sun affects my gardens in different ways. Now, behind you here is my tomato plants they're on the east side. That's, that's for a reason, so that the morning sun dries the plants off and we keep the viruses down. But guys, I'm, I hope that you understand a little bit better about squash and why we do what we do here at Deep South Homestead and why we prune and how we prune. So leave me some comments down below if there's something that you just didn't understand and maybe I can answer it when I get ready to look at the comments. Uh, or maybe you have a technique that you might want to mention or something that I didn't bring out that you think might be important. Leave it in the comment below and we'll check them out and maybe everybody can learn together. So thank you guys from Deep South Homestead.